I cannot then believe in this concept of an anthropomorphic god who has the powers of interfering with these natural laws. As I said before, the most beautiful and most profound religious emotion that we can experience is the sensation of the mystical. And this mysticality is the power of all true science. Albert Einstein From Peter A. Bucky The Private Albert Einstein Kansas City Andrews and McBeal 1992, page 86 the mystical trend of our time, which shows itself particularly in the rampant growth of the so-called theosophy and spiritualism, is for me no more than a symptom of weakness and confusion, since our inner experiences consist of reproductions and combinations of sensory impressions. The concept of a soul without a body seems to me to be empty and devoid of meaning. Albert Einstein, in a letter February 5, 1921. From Albert Einstein, The Human Side, page 40. Mere unbelief in a personal God is no philosophy at all. Albert Einstein, Letter to V. T. Altonen, May 7, 1952. Einstein Archive, 59-059. From the expanded, quotable Einstein, page 216. I have repeatedly said that in my opinion the idea of a personal God is a childlike one. You may call me an agnostic, but I do not share the crusading spirit of the professional atheist whose fervor is mostly due to a painful act of liberation from the fetters of religious indoctrination received in youth. I prefer an attitude of humility corresponding to the weakness of our intellectual understanding of nature and of our own being. Albert Einstein to Guy H. Ranner, Jr. September 28th 1949. From Michael R. Gilmore, Einstein's God, Just What Did Einstein Believe About God? Skeptic, 1997, 5 to 64. For science can only ascertain what is, but not what should be, and outside of its domain value judgments of all kinds remain necessary. Religion, on the other hand, deals only with evaluations of human thought and action. It cannot justifiably speak of facts and relationships between facts. Albert Einstein, Out of My Later Years, page 25 In view of such harmony in the cosmos which I, with my limited human mind, am able to recognize, there are yet people who say there is no God. But what really makes me angry is that they quote me for the support of such views. Albert Einstein According to the testimony of Prince Hubertus of Lowenstein, as quoted by Ronald W. Clark, Einstein, The Life and Times, page 425. I received your letter of June 10th. I have never talked to a Jesuit priest in my life, and I am astonished by the audacity to tell such lies about me. From the viewpoint of a Jesuit priest, I am, of course, and have always been, an atheist. Your counter-arguments seem to me very correct, and could hardly be better formulated. It is always misleading to use anthropomorphical concepts in dealing with things outside the human sphere, childish analogies. We have to admire, in humility, the beautiful harmony of the structure of this world as far as we can grasp it. And that is all. Albert Einstein To Guy H. Ranner, Jr. July 2, 1945 Responding to a rumor that a Jesuit priest had caused Einstein to convert from atheism. From Michael R. Gilmore, Einstein's God. Just what did Einstein believe about God? Skeptic, 1997, 5 to 62. I am convinced that some political and social activities and practices of the Catholic organizations are detrimental and even dangerous for the community as a whole, here and everywhere. I mention here only the fight against birth control at a time when overpopulation in various countries has become a serious threat to the health of people and a grave obstacle to any attempt to organize peace on this planet. Albert Einstein in a letter, 1954, from Paul Blanchard, American Freedom and Catholic Power, New Jersey, Greenwood Publishing, 1984, page 10. Is Einstein was not a life of prayer and worship, yet he lived by a deep faith, 
a faith not capable of rational foundation. That there are laws of nature to be discovered, his lifelong pursuit was to discover them. His realism and his optimism are illuminated by his remark, Subtle is the Lord, but malicious he is not. Raffinerit ist der Ergot, aber Boschaft ist er nicht. When asked by a colleague what he meant by that, he replied, Nature hides her secret because of her essential loftiness, but not by means of ruse. Die Natter verbicht ich Hermenes durch die Erhabenheit eures Wesens, aber nicht durch List. Abraham Pais. Subtle is the Lord, the science and the life of Albert Einstein. Oxford University Press, New York, 1982. However, Einstein's God was not the God of most other men. When he wrote of religion, as he often did in middle and later life, he tended to adopt the belief of Alice's Red Queen, that words mean what you want them to mean, and to clothe with different names what to more ordinary mortals and to most Jews looked like a variant of simple agnosticism. Replying in 1929 to a cabled inquiry from Rabbi Goldstein of New York, he said that he believed in Spinoza's God, who reveals himself in the harmony of all that exists, not in a God who concerns himself with the fate and actions of men. And it is claimed that years later, asked by Ben-Gurion whether he believed in God, even he, with his great formula about energy and mass, agreed that there must be something behind the energy. No doubt. But much of Einstein's writing gives the impression of belief in a god, even more intangible and impersonal than a celestial machine-minder, running the universe with indisputable authority and expert touch. Instead, Einstein's god appears as the physical world itself, with its infinitely marvelous structure operating at atomic level with the beauty of a craftsman's wristwatch, and at stellar level with the majesty of a massive cyclotron. This was belief enough. It grew early and rooted deep. Only later was it dignified by the title of cosmic religion, a phrase which gave plausible respectability to the views of a man who did not believe in a life after death, and who felt that if virtue paid off in the earthly one, then this was the result of cause and effect rather than celestial reward. Einstein's God thus stood for an orderly system obeying rules which could be discovered by those who had the courage, imagination, and persistence to go on searching for them. It was to this past which he began to turn his mind, soon after the age of twelve. The rest of his life, everything else was to seem almost trivial by comparison. Ronald W. Clark, Einstein, The Life and Times, New York, World Publishing, 1971, pages 19 to 20. That a man can take pleasure in marching in formation to the strains of a band is enough to make me despise him. He has only been given his big brain by mistake. A backbone was all he needed. This plague spot of civilization ought to be abolished with all possible speed. A hundred times every day I remind myself that my inner and outer life depend on the labors of other men, living and dead and that I must exert myself in order to give, in the measure as I have received, and am still receiving. Albert Einstein